Well, joining me now is Dr. Mesut Yilmaz. He's a professor specializing in infectious diseases at Istanbul Medipol University. Thanks for joining us, doctor, and it is great to see you. I mean, we regularly feature you on our programs, but we didn't see you for the last two weeks because you actually tested positive for COVID-19. So I'm very relieved to see you back uh, in front of our cameras. But I need you to tell me how, what was your experience and your experience with being treated uh, in the hospitals here? Well, uh, I was one of the lucky ones, one of the lucky patients, because I it was one of the ones who had the disease with mild symptoms. I just had mild fever and just asthenia and some bone and muscle pains for just three days. And then I was um, diagnosed with COVID-19 by my colleagues because my cough persisted. And we had a CT scan and we realized that there were typical COVID lesions in both my lungs. And then I was treated with um, hydroxychloroquine. Now, as for the treatment modalities or what was made, what, what is still being made different compared to other countries in our country, first of all, I will talk about many treatment modalities, but there is no scientifically proven effective treatment modality for COVID yet. Now, all the treatment modalities uh, are currently under uh, investigations in, in various clinical trials in many countries. Now, our first case in Turkey was reported on March 10th. And until that time, probably one of our advantages was that we had the chance to prepare for the pandemic. By that time, we knew uh, about some in vitro studies done in China showing effectiveness of both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. These are two antimalarial drugs, very interestingly, show somewhat effectiveness against the virus in the lab. And by that time, we were also aware among the, of the first uh, French experience by, uh, published by Professor Godret and his colleagues stating that hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin uh, would be effective if they were started very early. So what, what the Turkish government did, which was, I think, a, a very clever thing to do, they, they collected all hydroxychloroquine drugs available in the pharmacies to prevent a panic, to prevent people rushing, the, rushing into the pharmacies and trying to get the drug. And every patient was given a regimen of hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, and also oseltamivir. This was an influenza drug in the beginning. In the meantime, oh, the paper by Chao and his colleagues came out in New England Journal of Medicine from China, stating that in hospitalized patients, adult patients with severe COVID, actually, uh, the, the AIDS drug, the HIV drug, lopinavir-ritonavir combination, okay. was actually showed no benefit. Do Doctor, so can I interrupt you there, though, because I, I yeah, really need sure. to ask you about this controversy, you know, over hydroxychloroquine. Uh, a lot of experts are saying don't push the use of this medicine because it has not been tested uh, in cases of uh, COVID-19 enough to prove that it is an effective treatment and the potential side effects could be worse, you know, not least causing heart damage, even cardiac arrest. So why, why does Turkey feel very safe with this product at an early stage of the disease? Right, correct. Well, both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, they, would, uh, they, uh, they can cause serious cardiac damage. That is correct. But if they are given concomitantly with other drugs, would also have some serious cardiac side effects, like azithro azithromycin, for example. That is why... In Turkey, we very quickly stopped using azithromycin with hydroxychloroquine. Now, on its own, it appears to be a safe drug, actually. So it has okay. been used widely with people with rheumatoid arthritis and lupus erythematosus diseases, and it is fairly a safe drug. But if it's given with other drugs that have cardiac toxicity, it might cause some danger. Therefore, uh, w w when we have to give uh, other drugs that have serious cardiac toxicities, we will always uh, look. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, 
it seems we... Oh, no, we have you back. Okay, uh, Dr. Yilmaz, a uh, quick final question then for you. I mean, as far as the progression uh, of COVID-19 in Turkey and the increase in the number of cases, are you getting a feeling for when we might actually see a peak here? And I also have to ask you if you're concerned uh, with what happened uh, just days ago when that curfew was announced with two hours' notice, bringing hundreds of people out into the public, crowded together in the streets, uh, trying to get supplies. Are you fearful that that might bring another surge in cases, or do you think the pandemic is, is being well-managed enough that we're going to see the peak soon? Well, well the, 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 the question is sort of tricky. Well, the pandemic is, uh, is well-managed. That, that's my personal belief. But it, well, for treatment-wise, we have all the drugs available, we have the plasma, we have the stem cells, and we have everything but it is not the treatment modality that makes the difference in such pandemic circumstances. It is the social structure and the culture. This is why Italy has been failing. This is why Spain has been failing. And this is why we have a huge acceleration of uh, patients in the, in the last two weeks. Now, we believe we will see the peak in two, two weeks towards the end of April by the first week of May. But again, well, it's the culture, and it's really difficult to deal with the culture, just as we observed at the day of the curfew on Friday. And we do believe it's going to bring us more patients. Okay. Dr. Yilmaz, so great to see you. Thanks so much uh, for joining us, and stay, stay healthy.